Hey, Internet. Eric here again. Um, you Hate It, I Don't. You Hate It, I Don't, if you're new to my channel, is a concept I've decided where I feel like I'm in the minority really enjoying a film for what it is, even though that either fans or critics or the people involved in making the film have basically shit on it. So, hence, you hate it, but I don't. And since today is St. Patrick's Day, when I'm filming this, I don't know when I'm going to upload this, take a fucking guess of what I'm talking about. St. Patrick's Day, movie almost everybody hates or at least think is total crap, I'm talking about the original Leprechaun. The Leprechaun came out in 92, and it stars Warwick Davis, uh, Jennifer Aniston, uh, what's his name, Mark Holton, Francis from Pee-wee's Big Adventure, um, Robert High Gorman, that little shitty kid actor from Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead, and sometimes they come back. I can bet you can already guess how I feel about him. Um, directed by Mark Jones. Mark Jones, uh, to my knowledge, he also did a Leprechaun ripoff movie called Rumpelstiltskin, which will probably be on uh, You Hate It, I Don't as well. Um, if you're new to my channel, welcome. But, you know, there's minor plot spoilers when I discuss movies, but it's fucking Leprechaun from 1992. What would you expect? Alright, I don't think you're going to be disappointed if I spoil anything from this movie. Um, starts out, we meet Dan O'Grady. And Dan O'Grady has come home from Ireland. You know, come from Ireland to uh, America. I believe it's from his mother's funeral. And he shows up drunk as shit. Wife answers the door. She wonders what the deal is, and he basically says that he stole some gold from a leprechaun. And, of course, his wife thinks he's either drunk as shit or batshit crazy. Oh, Dan's home. He just fucked up again. Something stupid like that. Um, we find out it's true. The leprechaun has tracked him all the way back to America, somehow. Um, Mrs. O'Grady is killed. Dan O'Grady gets the leprechaun injured enough. Where he can throw it in a crate. Like a, a wooden crate. And he places a four-leaf clover on top of it. Which you obviously find out later. Which is, is a huge weakness of a leprechaun. And as Grady is about ready to set the fucking thing on fire. He has a stroke. We cut to, I believe, ten years later. And Jennifer Aniston and her father are moving into the same house. And at the time, they meet up with... I, they're, they're called Three Guys Who Can Paint. I don't know if they're brothers, but there is... Robert High Gorman plays young Alex. We have Ken Olant plays the oldest Nathan. And then we have Mark Holton plays the lovable Ozzy. And Ozzy is... He's mentally handicapped, but he's very, very childlike. Very innocent, very sweet. Believes in fairies, believes in, you know, rainbows... All that stuff. Keep that in mind. So they're there to paint the house. And while Jennifer Anderson is there to be the spoiled brat. Being forced to live out in you know the country. When she would rather live in L.A. With her cell phone and all that shit. Whatever. Eventually. Ozzy goes down in the basement. because Of course it has to be Ozzy. Because he's the simple one. Accidentally lets the leprechaun out of the crate. The rest of the movie is. Leprechaun. Tries to kill them. There's a subplot of Ozzy and um, Robert Hyde Gorman's character, Alex. They see a rainbow. They chase the rainbow. They find a bunch of gold coins, which was the gold coins that uh, Mr. O'Grady had stolen from the leprechaun. And he hid it in an abandoned um, car. Just in the middle of the field. And they, they grab the coins. They're going to take it to the town to see if they're legitimate. And, of course, Ozzy does the whole, you know, like, cartoons. He, you know, bites the thing to see if it's real. Swallows it. Leprechaun won't leave them alone until they get all 100 gold coins. The last gold coin is inside Ozzy. Guess where this is going. All right. Leprechaun. A lot of people shit on this film. And they shit on it for good reason. Because it is fucking stupid. But the thing is, there's a lot of charm to this. With what, with what very little th um, stuff that is in this film, it's charming as hell. And I'll say why. The main reason why 
is Warwick Davis. Now, Warwick Davis, I love to death. I mean, I haven't seen a lot of him because nine times out of ten, you know, he's covered in makeup or he's in a suit. But, you know, he was in Return of the Jedi as Wicket, you know, the original Ewok. You know, he's in Star Wars, the new Star Wars movie. He was in one of the prequels. He's fucking Willow. But Warwick Davis is the reason to watch this film. Um, he's covered in up. He's covered up in all this fucking makeup, and I really enjoy the look of the makeup. And the thing is, to me, the creators of this film are like, you know, we need a midget or a dwarf, politically correct, whatever. We need a midget to play a killer leprechaun. Who is there? Anyone there that has some name value? Warwick Davis, and I think Warwick probably read the script and he's like, you know what? This is an easy paycheck. Um, but I'm going to take this role and I'm going to fucking run with it. And he does. He, as this little malevolent killer leprechaun, he takes what little, um, he, little, uh, sh I'm dead he takes what shit he has. You know, there's not a lot given to this character. He runs with it and he scores. I mean, he's a killer sadistic leprechaun. And he's got the puns, the one-liners, the limericks. Um, and he could tell he's eventually really having fun with this role. And, um, like, this is a horror comedy, okay? That you should. There's no way in fucking hell anyone should be taking this movie seriously as a horror movie. It's about a killer fucking leprechaun. It's like um, watching Sharknado and trying to take that film seriously. You just can't fucking do it. But Warwick Davis here, in every scene he's in, steals the show. Um, I love. There's a little subplot or a little side story where one of the the OCD things of leprechauns is whenever they see some shoes, they have to shine it. So one of my favorite scenes is as the group of characters are trying to. They know Old Man O'Grady has had a stroke, so he's in a rest home. So they want to go to visit him to find out how to kill the leprechaun. So as Jennifer Aniston gets in the vehicle to drive away to go meet Old Man O'Grady, the rest of the characters have all these shoes. Because one of the OCD things for leprechauns is they always have to shine shoes no matter what. So while Jennifer Aniston, uh, her character's name is Tori, is driving away, everyone else is throwing all these shoes in the field. And as the leprechaun wants to run and kill the group, he sees the shoes fly and he has to run back and shine them. He throws the shoe down and he goes to kill the, the characters. Sees a shoe fly, runs and, and goes and shines it. And what's great with Warwick Davis, he you can see him. He sees the shoe flying over his head. He gives this, you know, fuck me type of reaction. Goes to shine it. It's fun. I mean, he chases people on roller skates, on fucking tricycles, on a souped up um, type of like... Um, you know, one of those little kid cars, you know, that are battery operated that you sit in and fucking drive. A wheelchair. He's given all this shit material to work with. He makes it fun. He makes it charming. Um, Jennifer Aniston, she just plays a spoiled brat. Whatever. Um, Mark Holton. Mark Holton is lovable Ozzy. Now, when you realize he's mentally handicapped... Or just low IQ, childlike. I mean, I think he's pushing 40 here, but he's maybe got the IQ and the personality of a 10-year-old. You think that maybe they could be overdoing it. They could make the character annoying. Not on purpose, but, you know, make it annoying or kind of like cringeworthy, you know? Not Mark Holton. Here, he makes Ozzy very lovable, very likable. That's great. Ozzy is probably my favorite character in this film, other than Warwick Davis. And what I like is, you know, you got lovable, innocent Ozzy here, but after the leprechaun gets all of his gold, he's counting it. And he realizes he's missing one. Well, he's, of course, going to attack the rest of the group to get that one gold coin. And as he's attacking young Alex and threatening to kill him, Ozzy's personality changed. He opens up the barn door, like ripping parts of it off the hinges. And he goes from sweet, innocent Ozzy to this, you know, protector. You know, this is little Alex, his best friend or his brother, we don't know. 
And he basically says, no, you son of a bitch. You want this last gold coin. You got to come get it for me because it's in my stomach. And he goes, like I said, he did just sweet, innocent Ozzy to vengeful. Don't fuck with my friend Ozzy. And it's great. It's like on the, t on the turn of a dime. So good. Um, the other er uh, characters, uh, Ken Olint. Okay. Old Man O'Grady. Okay. Then there's Robert High Gorman. This annoying little shit. Because um, I got to play devil's advocate just because I really enjoy this film. There's not that. There's some, you know, there's some bad parts here. And this Robert High Gorman is the worst part of this fucking film. He's an annoying little shit. He can't really act. I Spoilers, I'm sorry. I'm very disappointed that the fucker lives through this film. I mean, every time he's on screen, it's just grating. It's just like, um, I've, if you watch my old videos, I, um... I talk about how Leslie Jones is horrible in the Ghostbusters reboot trailer, at least. Robert High Gorman is 1992's version of Leslie Jones here. Just unnecessary, annoying, and you just want to punch him in the fucking face. Other than that, everybody else is fine. Um, you can tell it's low budget. You can tell most of the budget was spent on the shitty special effects. Like, the Leprechaun has some magical effects. Or it's, but, you know... On the ma the makeup effects, because the kills are, they leave very much to be desired. I mean, he, they kill old man O'Grady, you know, he, he plops out in the top of an elevator and he's just got some blood on his face. Um, the leprechaun snaps the neck of a police officer. They get a neck snap, you don't need any makeup or effects for that. But, and that's my kid running around on the ceiling, you know, ceiling, second floor. But, um, there is one cool kill, and Ozzy and Alex have taken the gold coins to a pawn shop, so they can verify if the gold coins are real, and the pawn shop owner asks to keep it overnight. Of course, the leprechaun shows up, wants the coin back, and he knocks the, sh the shop owner on the floor, and he proceeds to get a pogo stick, and pogo on the man's chest, basically until his lungs explode. And it's a really neat sequence, but, you know, it's just cuts to the pogo stick, cuts to the bloody face, cuts to the pogo stick, cut to a bloodier face type of thing. But it's a really creative kill. Nice fun scene because the leprechaun kills the man, but then goes to his OCD thing and makes sure to shine his shoes. So it's little things like that. You know, the comedy does work for the most part. I love the scene where the leprechaun is sneaking around the house. Looking for the gold coin while everybody's gone. Opens up a cabinet. He sees a box of fucking Lucky Charms. Looks at it. I believe he says the word dad. Eats it. And then spits it like Lucky Charms should be spit out of your mouth because it tastes like shit. But, yeah, that's it. There really isn't much to this film other than the fact it's about a killer fucking leprechaun. And... Killer fucking leprechaun, and you probably should have a bunch of beers and a bunch of friends to watch because it's fun. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a short video because there's not much I can really say about a killer fucking leprechaun movie, other than the fact that this movie here has spawned five sequels, I believe. Five sequels plus a reboot. So, if this movie was so shitty, I believe it. I believe it was pulled after like two weeks from theaters because fans couldn't stand it or people didn't go to see it. Why does it have such a cult following? Because it's fun. And some of the sequels are good. I do enjoy part two for the most part. Three where he goes to Las Vegas is decent. He ends up going to outer space in part four. Don't worry about that one. Part five, he goes to the hood. Part six, he returns to the hood. Then we have the reboot, which is not Warwick Davis. But Warwick Davis is in six of the original films as a leprechaun. And he just hams the shit out of it. Um, and, like I said, I can't praise this film. But I can say, you want to kill 90 minutes. You want to turn your brain off. You want to have fun. But put in leprechaun. You get what you expect. It's a killer leprechaun film. Watch it. Enjoy it. Have the beer handy. If you're Irish, have some whiskey handy. Have some other things handy if you need them to enjoy a leprechaun film. And I don't think you'll be disappointed. 
like I said, go in with low expectations because, again, it's like the Sharknado factor. What do you think you're getting? So, in the end, Leprechaun, I decently recommend. You know, I don't highly recommend. I decently recommend. It's a fun horror movie. You know, just watch it once a year on St. Patrick's Day. You don't really need to see it more than that. But, yeah, Leprechaun. So, in closing, uh, thank you for watching my channel. Or, yeah, and watching my video. Um, if you like what you see, please check out my other films. Other films? I make fucking videos. Check out my other videos. Um, I do movie reviews. You know, just plain movie reviews. I get drunk and rant about stuff. I do vlogs. Whatever. Just, I have playlists. Check them all out. Um, yeah. Like, subscribe, whatever. Cheers. And give it a shot. That's a shitty ending, isn't it? Um, cheers. And... I got nothing. But go watch Leprechaun. Later.